The Emacs Cinehawk Mini is the latest in a very long line of, yes, the same old Cinewhoop releases, but this does things a little bit differently. And this refined formula with a new motor size and a special soft mounted floating top mount where you're gonna get isolation of the camera in a drone that allows you to do full FPV acro mode is gonna be one of the most unique things on the market. Now, I will settle the elephant in the room and say that it's very, very hard to beat the DJI Avada 2 and the upcoming O4 camera system, but that's why this thing is notable because it comes in a bring your own VTX configuration for only $159. Yes, you can also buy it with an O3 unit on board um, if you just want to get up and flying until then because as we all know the O4 is probably three four six months away if it's ever coming but that's what I like about this it actually comes with a variety of camera mounting systems so that you can actually put in DJI you could put in walk snail you could put in HD zero or whatever flavor of camera system you prefer pretty nice mid-range size. Now it shrinks down quite a bit from Emax's original Cinehawk right here. And why is it getting so much smaller? Well, that's because the HD systems that are gonna be onboard recording are getting better and better. The DJI O3 was a leapfrog beyond the original air unit. And with the O4 air unit right around the corner, these type of releases where all of your HD recording is gonna be on the onboard camera, instead of needing to mount a larger GoPro system on board means that you can get equivalent super HD footage without needing the extra size, weight, noise, and power hungriness. Now the Cinehawk Mini comes in both DJI ready to fly version and this one, which is bring your own VTX. I actually really like this sort of in between size. Here is a full size Fox Whoop three and a half inch size cinema that is meant to carry an action camera. This is a DJI Action 2 mount, but it could easily carry a full size hero with this power. But man, these things are very loud. Then you have something a little bit smaller. This is Beta FPV's Pavo 20 and this thing comes in at an even smaller and quieter package, but it doesn't quite have the power to rip around. This is a very nice all arounder if you needed to fly outside or inside, but if you're edging a little bit more towards outside and you don't need all the size and weight, this actually performs pretty well. The extra motor and prop size that you're gonna get on this package is gonna give you a little bit better flight feel when you're flying outdoors. It's not gonna make you as susceptible to things like wind. And I like the unique camera mounting system that both of these use that sort of float on a series of little gummies right here. The Pavo 20 does that and Emacs actually takes it one step further and they have their own little like sort of top plate thing that's all floating on top of these little gummy things right here that gives you a little more isolation to the video system. It actually has a carbon body right here with ducts around it for protection, meaning that you're gonna have less vibration. Sometimes these actually mount the motors onto the shell itself and that plastic is gonna vibrate a little bit more than something like a carbon fiber like this one is. So I like this solution a little bit better. It's actually pretty tough feeling, so I don't think you're actually gonna snap this very easily. And that's what you want. Emacs is known for making things that can take a hit. Uh, and so it's meant for a 3S or even a 4S battery with an XT30 right there and your capacitor on board to help you in voltage spice. It looks like this is Emacs's A-Band two and a half inch prop, which is the same type of thing that you would see on their Tiny Hawk freestyle line. It's just a simple four screws to take off this bottom plate right here. Then this just pulls off. So this is kind of cool. You could figure out a way to fly this without the ducks, I feel like. Look at that, pretty cool. But we're gonna go ahead and install this here. You end up screwing the O3 unit to this little piece that comes off. It's actually not too bad. And then you put everything back together and then it's just this little case goes on with four screws. And here it is all complete with the DJI Air Unit O3 installed. It's pretty good camera lens protection 
Um, these little things do stick out a little bit, but those are also part of the camera that offers protection. If you land upside down, you are going to hit the top part of that camera, but not the lens itself. Uh, if you land right side up, you should be totally fine because this is a sort of a nice, like a nice little plastic um, buffer, uh, like a super tall hit. You know, this might shatter, but I think in the if in the, under normal usage and normal crashing, it's going to be fine. I actually really like this whole thing that the camera is sort of soft mounted. You can see it sort of compress right there. That should give you a little bit of isolation and a little bit less need to use the software based image stabilization. Look at these secret props. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you get these before MCK got his? You, know, you just the message to Zon and uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. He he wasn't trusting MCK and he wanted me to test them before you know before he released them. You think you can convince them to make a shit prop? Yeah, I was trying to. Apparently, we're not famous enough. <laughs> <laughs> shit prop. I keep trying to add Zong on Facebook because I want to hit him up about. Randy, you guys want to see the DJI on the screen? It's working. Oh, look at that. It's, it's not loud, it's pretty good. Yeah. All right. It's pretty lightweight because it has... Yeah, it. This is just a tiny trainer battery. You could probably use a better battery. All right, yeah, that's tiny trainer. Oh, that's a sweet little quad. It flew really smooth. Right? You love doing yoga. <laughs> Have I said that today? Yeah. yeah, that's a nice little setup. I like this sort of vibration dampening for the camera. This would be a cool little quad to just surf around or between some people or maybe do some like close quarters filming with. Nice. Pretty cool setup. Yeah. Is. Bring your own VTX combo so you can buy the quad. Heck yeah, that's a dope setup. Only if it was uh, all four, DJI all four. I know. <laughs> Soon. Yeah. Come on, e Hopefully. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Emacs. Now this is a part of the smaller school of center whoops. And if you look at it compared to something like the Pavo 20, you're gonna find that this is gonna be a very nice indoor outdoor companion. Now why the Pavo 20 is right on the line where it does indoor a little bit better than outdoor, this is sort of the reverse of that. This does outdoor a little bit better than indoor because of the larger prop size, a little bit more weight, but it's still, even with the O3, without a battery, it's only about 150 grams, so very, very light. The other thing that I will note that this is one of the most quiet sin whoops that I've ever flown. Even the Houston crew and the shit pilots both commented at how quiet this was for a sin whoop. They couldn't believe it. Sometimes when I'm flying those full size sin whoops like the three and a half inch fox whoop, that thing was so loud it made you feel like a hurricane was coming and this felt like it was barely larger than a tiny whoop, very impressive. If you're a tiny trainer pilot, you can actually run a 3S 550 Tattoo, the same batteries that are shared with that system, so you don't have to go out and buy new ones. Um, it's a very nice package. I will say this is the easiest bring your own VTX option that I've ever done. A lot of the smaller ones, including the Pavo 20, are so fiddly to put together that it takes you hours and hours. This one, you can have it done in about 15 or 20 minutes. 
even if you're doing it for the first time, very, very quick and easy. I really love the refinements that Emacs has given you to this formula. Probably the best one that we've seen yet in terms of, of ease and usability to get started. It has Express LRS on board. That really nice 1303.5 motor size with a generous KV gives you the power that you need. I really like the tune and the rates that came out of the box on this thing. The rates seem very calm and subdued, which is what you want for a camera machine like this. Because DJI systems like the O3 and eventually the O4 that will probably fit in here nicely are getting so, so good. You really don't need to carry a GoPro anymore and you can have something that is very, very lightweight, just like this, doesn't make a lot of noise and flies pretty nicely. In fact, I like the design that you could, I think, potentially just take the ducks off and fly it like that. I'm not 100% sure how that would do. In terms of cine whoops, if you don't need a GoPro and you're outdoors a little more, I would definitely choose this over just about anything else on the market. If you have the same set of requirements, but you're indoors a little more, I might still choose the Pavo 20, uh, but both of these are gonna be sort of those all arounder things. Some of the even smaller things are gonna be better suited for only indoors. And of course, something with three and a half inch is gonna be the monster if you're outdoors only, and you actually need to carry an action camera too. So variety of options all the way from the bottom to the top. I love the extra features that this has. I love that you can access both the USB-C on the DJI 3 Air Unit and the flight controller. Again, the flight controller uses USB-C and I love that you can access it straight through the top plate. No fiddling around like you have to do with some of the sitting whoops to be able to get your footage off the craft or to be able to dip update a setting in Betaflight. I love all the considerations that Emacs has done. They've really been just kind of king of these smaller bonnet flies for a number of decades. And they took a couple of years off while they were kind of making their comeback. Um, but they're pretty much back, guys. If you're in the market for one of these, I don't see why you wouldn't. Now, if you do want to go ahead and put down 500 buckaroonies for the new O3 goggles that connect to absolutely anything, just be warned, it won't connect to this yet, but it probably will in the future. Avada 2 is hard to beat, but Avada 2 is louder, heavier, and doesn't have the versatility of being able to do full acro and pilot full manually. Um, while it does have the ability to do that, I would be more comfortable crashing something like this. What do you think in the comments, guys? Are Cine still something that you're interested in? This one flies decent, right? It's a good weight to power. A lot of times synonyms are severely overweight, so they're very difficult to learn on. People are attracted to the ducks because they're protective and they have a little bit more safety in mind. Uh, and this one actually gives you the versatility to do that and execute on that. Thanks, guys.